Hi everyone. Today I'll be showing you how to create a recipe website with Avada and ACF Pro. This video will demonstrate the power of custom fields and Avada layouts, working together to display unique and feature-rich recipes. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. I've imported the Avada Bakery pre-built website here, and in this video I'm going to create a recipes custom post type. We could use the portfolio post type for this, as has been done on the nutritionist pre-built site, but here I'm going to create a new post type called recipes. To do this, I've installed the free custom post type UI plugin. There are many plugins like this, and they all create custom post types, but this is very simple to use and is one of the most popular plugins of its type. So I'll head to CPT UI and add edit post types and create a post type called recipes. I'll call the slug recipes and add the plural and the singular labels. I'll also click this link to populate additional labels based on my chosen labels. There are a lot of options for post types, but I'm going to leave all the defaults in this case. At the bottom here, there are options to select taxonomies and with this plugin, you can even create your own. But for this example, I'll just add the tags taxonomy, which is native to WordPress. I'll just click on add post type to save this. Now the same process could of course apply to the creation of any other custom post type you could think of. All right, so now we have our recipe custom post type, as we can see along the side here with the My Recipes label. Before I add a recipe, let's now use ACF Pro to add some custom fields. I've already installed and activated the plugin directly from Avada Plugins Add-ons, so we're ready to go. To start off, we need a field group, so I'll go to Custom Fields and Add New. And here I'll call this field group Recipe Data. Under the Location area here, I'll set the rule that this field group only shows if the post type is equal to Recipes. And under that in Settings, I'll just change the position to be High. So the custom fields I'm about to create will show up before the content when editing recipe posts. So now we can add our custom fields to the group. For our recipes, I'm going to add difficulty, prep time, cooking time, calories, serves, as in how many servings it makes or how many people it serves, and recipe description. Also, I'll add one for a recipe image gallery. You could of course create completely different custom fields from this. The choice is entirely yours. OK, so I'll click on Add Field here, and I'll add my first one. This will be Difficulty. The field name is added automatically, and for the field type, on this one, let's use Select. In the Choices field, let's add our selections. Let's make them Easy, Medium, Difficult, and finally MasterChef Difficult. And let's set the default value to be Medium. OK, that's all we need for that one, so let's close that field and make our second custom field. This will be prep time. We can leave this as a text field type, and let's set the default for this one to be 30 minutes. OK, let's close that and add cooking time. Again, this can be text, and I'll set the default value to 45 minutes. I'll close this, and now I can add calories. The field type here will be a number. I'll set the default value at 500, add cals to the append field, set a minimum and maximum value of 0 and 5000, and the step size of 1. OK, that should be good. Serves is the next one, and this can also be a number. I'll set the default as 4, the minimum as 1, and a maximum of, say, 24, again with a step size of 1. OK, let's close that and create one called Recipe Description. This will be a text field, and we don't need a default value here. Finally, let's add an image gallery. I'll call it Gallery, and under the field type I'll also choose Gallery. For the return format, I'll just leave it on Image Array, and for the preview size, I'll just use Full Size. OK, that's it. We've created our custom field, so let's publish this field group and we're nearly ready to create our first recipe. First, however, I just want to enable the Avada Builder on this new post type. So I'll head to the Avada Dashboard, and Options, 
Builder Options, and then scroll down and select the recipe post type and save the options. Now I'll just go to My Recipes and click on Add New. Let's call this one Raspberry Apple Pie. As we can see here at the top, we have our new custom fields populated with their defaults. So I'll just adjust these for this recipe. Let's say it's medium difficulty with a prep time of 30 minutes and a cooking time of one hour, eight serves and 1200 cals. You can use the back or front end builder for the recipe content, but the actual custom fields will only display in the back end builder. So I'm just working in that. I'll also add my recipe description in here and I'll add a few images to this gallery for this recipe. I'll click on Add to Gallery and choose these three images here and add them in. Next, I'll add a featured image over here and we'll choose this lovely shot from the Media Library and add that in. Also, I'll add a few tags here. Let's say Pie, Dessert, Apple and Raspberry. For the actual recipe content, I'm going to add a container I've saved into the Avada library. This is a template for the ingredients and recipe steps, and we can use this for every recipe and then just fill in the blanks. Okay, so now we have the basic recipe post content. On the front end, the recipe itself is going to be displayed using a layout, and we'll have a lot more information as well as the post content, but that's going to be coming from the custom fields we've just made in ACF Pro, as well as some layout and design elements we are going to add into the conditional layout. So now let's go and create that layout. I'll head to Avada Layouts and create a layout called Recipes. I want two custom layout sections for this layout, a page title bar and a content layout section. I'll just create those two here. I'll call this one Recipe PTB and I'll add a content one as well called Recipe Content. Let's also go into the layout conditions and to recipes and let's add the condition of all recipes for this layout. Okay, let's design. I'll start with the page title bar layout section. I'll just edit it and head into Avada Live as my preferred builder. First up, I'll head to the layout section options and the layout section tab and set the view dynamic content option as a recipe and I'll select my raspberry apple pie as the recipe to preview. Okay, so now let's add a container. I'll just add a 1-1 container and edit that. And let's set a minimum height on this one of 450 pixels. I'll also just center the row alignment and the column justification here. On the design tab, I'll add some padding top and bottom. And on the background tab, let's add an image. On the image tab, I'll set some dynamic content for the background image. And here I'll choose the recipe featured image. It's at the very top of the viewport, so I'll skip lazy loading for this image as well. And I'll also set the background blend mode to multiply. That enables me to come back to the color tab and add a color overlay. I'll just choose black and reduce the opacity. Okay, that looks good. Now for some content. I'll add a title element into the column here. And for the title, again, we'll choose some dynamic content. And this, of course, will be the recipe title. I'll center this and leave it as a H1 and I'll come down the bottom here and change the font color to white. Okay, so now to add my first custom field data. It might be easiest to duplicate this title to start. I'll delete the dynamic data of title and instead choose ACF text. And here I just need to add my custom field name. And if we quickly go back and look at that, we can see the names in this column. And the one I need is recipe underscore description. So now on the design tab, I'll change this to a H2 and override the font size to 24. Finally, I don't want this text to go the full width of the column, so I'm going to edit the column and add 15% left and right padding to it. Okay, that looks good. So now under this, I have five other custom fields I want to display data from. So I'll start with a one fifth column. I'll edit the column. And on the design tab, I'll add some padding all around. And on the background tab, I'll give this column a color and reduce the opacity a bit. 
Into this column, I'll add a title element. And let's call this difficulty. On the design tab, I'll change this to a H3 and set a font override of 18. I'll also change the font family to Arial and the font color to this dark gray. I might also just remove title margins to tighten this up a bit. Okay, so now I'll duplicate this title and I'll change the title out with dynamic content. This will be ACF text and here I just need to add my custom field name, which is difficulty. On the design tab, I'll change this to div, adjust the font size to 26, change the font family to Arial Black, and the font color to this purple. Okay, that looks good. So now I can duplicate this column and adjust it for my next custom field. I'll change this title to Prep Time, and I'll edit the ACF text field in the other title and change this to Prep underscore Time. Okay, I'll just do the other three in the same way. All right, now we can see the custom field data. And in fact, that's my page title bar finished. I'll just save that. And then head back to Avada Layouts. Now it's time to do the Content Layout section. I'll just open that one up in Avada Live. Okay, so the Content Layout section is going to control the layout of the content section of all the recipes. Apart from pulling the content from the actual recipe posts, I want to add a few more elements to this layout. I'll start by heading to the Layout Section Options and the Layout Section tab, and setting the View Dynamic Content option as a recipe, and I'll just set the Raspberry Apple Pi as the recipe, and click on Preview. And there's my page title bar. So let's start the Content Layout section with a container with a 1 3rd 2 thirds column combo. There's already 60 pixels default content padding coming from the Layout section options here, so I'm just going to remove the top margins on these columns to start. In the first one, I'll add the Author element. I'll just hide the headings, make the Author avatar a circle, and reduce the top margin to 0 pixels. OK, in the other column, I'll add the Social Sharing element. I think there are a few too many sharing options here, so instead of pulling from the global options, I'll just select a few specified sharing platforms. I'll also change the tagline to read Share This Recipe, and again set the top margin to 0 pixels. OK, that looks good, so let's move on. Under this is where the recipe content will be, so here I'll add a 1-1 one -one container, and add the content element. This then pulls the content from the recipe posts. Awesome. Under this, I want a pagination element, and I'm going to set that to Sticky Preview, which takes it out of the page flow and sets it in the middle of the page. I'll also just head to the Design tab and increase the Preview height a bit to 150 and reduce the Preview width to 300. I might also increase the Preview Visible Area width to 50 pixels as well, so more of the Preview will be visible. OK, finally in this Layout section, I need to add my last custom field the gallery. I'll create a new 1-1 container, and I'll edit that and go to the Design tab and give it 50 pixels top and bottom padding. And on the Background tab, I'll give this a background color as well. Now I'll add the Gallery element in here. I'll just go to the General tab and select Grid, and in the Dynamic Content option on the Bulk Image Upload, I'll choose ACF Gallery and enter the field name which for this custom field was just Gallery. OK, as it says here, we have to see the front end for a preview. But our Content Layout section is done now anyway, so let's save this, and head back to our Recipes and view the finished recipe post. OK, that looks awesome. Everything's being pulled dynamically from the recipe post and the custom fields, and all recipes are going to use this layout and as they are created, the custom fields will be there to fill in. The beauty of this setup is that adding individual recipes is going to be much faster and easier. You also have the control to change the layout at a later date for all recipes, instead of having to edit each post. And you could even build the layout and then only allow editors to add recipe content, so that they don't break the layout by accident. Alright, so that's a single recipe. Now how would we display these recipes together? Well, one way would be to use the Postcards element. Let's look at creating a postcard for recipes, and then adding them to the home page. 
To do this, I have to first make a postcard. This is done from the Avada library. I'll choose a postcard as the element type, and I'll call it Recipe Postcard. I'll just click on Create Library Element, and when that's done, I'll edit it in Avada Live. OK, so I've got the postcard in Avada Live here, and I've set the dynamic content as a recipe for preview purposes. Let's start by adding the postcard image element. Under this, I'll add a title element. I'll set the title using the dynamic content option here. This one will be just title. And on the design tab, let's make it a H2, and I might give it a bit more top margin. Under this, I'll add a checklist element. And here we're going to again pull our custom fields into it. I'll just search for an icon and choose this one. And with the dynamic data, I'll select ACF text and add difficulty into the field option. I'll also append some text into the before option. So as you can now see, it reads difficulty, medium. OK, I'll add another checklist. And this one will have an hourglass icon. This time it will be ACF text pulling the prep time. And here I'll add the word prep after the value. OK, I'll just quickly add my other three. And there we go. That's our finished postcard. I'll save this. And now we can move to the home page to add it in. Or of course you could add it to its own page. I've already added a container and title here on the home page. So we are now ready for the postcards element. I'll choose the recipe postcard from the list. Now my content source is going to be posts. But under post type, I need to choose recipes. And there they are. This is set up to show three recipes in a column, but you can show as many as you like. Please see the how to use postcards video for more information on this very cool feature. Okay, that's it. We've created a really cool recipe section for this website using the custom post type UI plugin, ACF Pro, and the Avada Builder, with help from Avada Layouts and Avada Postcards. How cool is that? Let me know what you think in the comments. OK, this concludes our video on how to create a recipe website with Avada and ACF Pro. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.